A little backstory. When I was 19, I lived with my mom in a ranch-style house on a road that backed up to a large field. On the other side was the main highway. About half a mile down from me was a loony farmer, and about a mile on the other side of me was... pretty much a crack house. I guess someone used to live there, but it was run down. I will say that the crackheads were pretty quiet. Other than those two houses, we were isolated. At the time I was working full time, and going to school full time. One of my classes ended at 10.30pm. I often wouldn't get home that day of the week until around 11.15ish. I was driving home one night and I noticed some guy walking down the road. He had a yellow shirt and track pants. I remember his outfit because it was stupid. It wasn't weird to see people walking down my road because of the whole crack house thing, but I instinctively looked over at him when I drove past. He turned and smiled and waved, which freaked me the fuck out. So I sped the half mile home to pull into the driveway, weirded out. I made sure all the doors and windows were secure and then sat on the couch to be a paranoid freak and wait to make sure the dude walked past my house. Except he didn't. And there was another guy with him, dressed in darker clothes. They actually walked up my driveway and started playing around with my car, testing the handles and stuff. In my hurry, I had forgotten to grab my phone from my car, so I was kind of worried that's what they were after, until the guy in yellow started approaching my door. I'm freaking out, so I go and wake up my mom. She's bleary and I'm trying to explain the situation when we both hear the doorknob turn very slowly. Good thing it was a deadbolt. She got out of bed, walked to the door, and then yellow shirt knocked. I perched up on the couch so I could get a good look at him and his friend, still in the driveway. The porch light was on because of the sensor. Yeah? My mom said. You dropped your wallet. I told my mom I had my wallet. It was in my purse. So she calmly told him that she had her wallet, and it was too late to be knocking on people's doors. I remember perfectly what he said next, even though this was about six years ago. Okay. I'm not a bad guy, just so you know. We were all pretty still. No one moved. Not even the guy at the door. Not even when the porch light went off. Then he tried the handle again. My mom told me to call the cops so she could go get her gun, and I told her I didn't have my phone, so she went to the kitchen to grab hers from the charger. She handed me the phone and walked to the bathroom, and stared out the window into the backyard. Then she went to her room to grab her Ruger. I was talking to the cops and explaining the situation, all while watching the two guys, explaining that there were two suspicious guys at our door when my mom came back and said, one in our backyard too, which explained why she looked out the bathroom window. She glimpsed him from the kitchen and went to get a more discreet look. My mom walked back over to the door with her gun and loudly said, if he tries the handle again, I'm just going to open the door and shoot him. Fuck knows why she said that instead of waiting for the cops to arrive, but the guys took off down the road. I told her and she rushed to the bathroom where the guy apparently in the backyard saw his friends running down the road and sprinted off too. They were going in the direction of the crack house. The cops searched our house and our yard, then went to the drug house, where they found five dudes hanging around. One was the yellow shirt guy, and I'm assuming his friends were with him. They did get arrested, and nothing weird like that ever happened again. But I was on edge for a while. I still make sure the doors are locked at all times every day, even though I live in a much nicer area now. Anyway, sorry it was a bit anticlimactic. The dudes got caught. This happened a few years ago. I must have been about 17. I finished my shift at a local retail store at about 7 p.m. I live in the UK, and it was winter, so it was really dark outside. 
I started my usual 15 minute walk home. On the way I pass a gym that's a few minutes away from my house. It's not exactly the nicest of places, but nothing too sketchy. I've walked past a thousand times. As I was walking past the building I heard voices. The voices got louder as I approached. I turned left after the building onto the dark circled path. The voices suddenly stopped. They must have heard my footsteps as I turned the corner. This put me on edge straight away, but people sometimes stop talking in those situations, so I carried on walking. I could see through the dark a couple of figures sitting on an abandoned stairway that led to a blocked off door. I carried on walking, and they kept silent whilst the social paranoia was exasperated by the natural fear of it being dark. As soon as I passed them I heard footsteps walk down the metal stairwell behind me. To avoid seeming strange I kept looking forward and walked. It could have been coincidence or something, right? The footsteps carried on behind me in complete silence. The footsteps got closer, and closer, and closer, until finally I forced myself to resist the urge and looked behind me. An outstretched arm and a grasping hand tried to grab me. It was just a couple of inches away when I sprinted off while still looking behind. He spat, Come here you cunt. Instantly I saw it was an older bloke, around 40, who was out of shape. At the same time however, I saw the other guy was far taller and slimmer, but was some distance back and never attempted to run. Being a fit 17 year old, I confidently slowed to a run. Adrenaline was flowing, but I kept calm. He shouted as I turned from the dark circle path towards my house. They stopped pursuing straight away, and I got home safely. The next day in the local newspaper, there were several attacks in that area, including an elderly lady. They got their victims in a headlock before mugging them. That was the first time I truly realized there are people out there who are evil, who prey on good people that work for their money. The moral of this story is if you ever feel someone is following you, then you start running straight away. Even if it's a slight paranoia, just start running. Worst case you come across a bit weird to a stranger. It's easy to think you'd do it in a similar situation, but it's a different story when you're near strangers. And I will never know why the other man never tried to help his friend. Was his heart not fully into it? He was far fitter than the main guy. They could have worked together or something. Just to clarify, I didn't run straight away through fear of looking weird despite my gut instincts. Now though, I would have started running as soon as they stopped talking. This isn't as dramatic as some of the other stories here but it scared the shit out of me. I'm a woman in my early 20s, and I live in a flat with a male friend of the same age. Our flat is on the top floor, with our kitchen window above the door. We have all our windows open at the moment because we smoke, plus it's summer and hot all the time. There's usually at least one of us home at all times, as I work 9 to 5 and he works nights, so the open window thing isn't a problem. A few weeks ago my flatmate went away for a few days, so that day he happened to close the window in the kitchen. It's maybe the first time it's been closed in the six months we've lived here. That night, I came home drunk and was on the sofa messing around with my phone when I guess I fell asleep. The living room is connected to the kitchen. Around an hour later, maybe 2am, I'm woken up by a weird scratching noise in the kitchen. I now realize it was someone clawing at the window that they expected to be open, but at the time I was still wasted. I got up and turned on the light to go to the bathroom, and the scratching stops. I go to the bathroom, not thinking about the noise that woke me up, when I heard a louder scratching noise, much more guttural. I go back to the kitchen and look out the window, and there's someone on the road dragging a big stepladder away. Again, didn't really think about it. The next day I look out my kitchen window and see this directly under it. 
It's a board to safely stand on surfaces that might bust easily, like a fragile roof thing over a front door. It looks like there's a CCTV camera there, but it's only a shell, and it's quite obviously not working from the front. I called the landlord to ask if there was any work happening to the house that we weren't informed about. Nope. Nothing. I have no idea if the person tried to break in again, but I only thought to share this as my flatmate went away two days ago, and at some point today the board outside the window disappeared. My girlfriend and I came home together and walked inside. We live in a major city, in a nice neighborhood with a small yard like many city row houses. I saw that the water pitcher I filled this morning was empty, which I found strange, so I filled it and went back out to water the plants. When I walked outside a man was standing at our gate, a few feet away from me. I ignored him and watered the plants, and when I turned around, he was still there. He looked like a normal guy, our age, white upper middle class type. I said hi, and he asked if I lived there. I said yes. He asked my name. I told him. He stood silent. I asked if he lived here. He said, somewhere around here. I watered the other plants. He asks how long I'd lived here. I said a few years. He asks how long exactly. I found it unsettling and told him I didn't keep count. He asked where I was from originally and I said West Virginia. He stood silent. I made a deliverance joke he didn't get. He asked where my girlfriend was from. She was inside. That meant he had watched us come inside and had been there since we were home. I said it was nice to meet him and offered my hand to shake his. He said his name was James. I went back inside. I told her how weird it was, and before I could explain he was pounding at the door saying my name. I came out and unlocked the first two doors. I asked what he needed. He wanted to come inside. He said someone hired him and he knew everything about us. He repeated a few times that he couldn't talk outside and needed to come in. I told him no. He eventually said someone was watching him and he couldn't tell me what he wanted, but he could give me a general idea. He offered to empty his pockets, which he did. Headphones, lighter, and a cigarette pack. He acted as if he had something urgent to tell us and he couldn't talk about it. I asked him to get to the point. He told me something about a revolution. I told him I had to go. He asked what I needed to do. I said, life stuff. I closed the door. He walked back to the street. I could see out the window that he was looking in and another man approached him. They were talking about us, saying my name for several minutes. A neighbor came down to do laundry. I told her to lock the door. She said that they creeped her out because they were talking until she walked up and were silent. We called the cops. They took minutes to get here and the two men left seconds before their cars arrived. The police could not find them. I have the security footage of the guy if you'd like to check it out. The audio isn't the best and it records 15 seconds of video based on movement and sound. I purchased it because our mail was being stolen a few years ago. Feel free to click the links to go check out the full video. There will be links in the description. I was about five or so living in Fort Bragg. My dad was in the service at the time. We lived in a tiny apartment and had a bit of a wacky older neighbor, who was a weird guy, but up until this point he hadn't done anything astonishingly bizarre. He was a drinker, and a lonely old man. I have a younger sister, and both of us were down for a nap, and my dad was sleeping as well, and my mom was getting ready for her night shift at a Walmart at the time. 
she hears yelling in the apartment next door and assumes it's the older guy having a PTSD episode, which happened on occasion. She hears a gunshot and is becoming increasingly concerned when the front door swings open. Me and my sister are awake at this point, crying. She comes out and the guy is walking in, yelling about Vietnam and is wielding a shotgun. Luckily for us, my mom is basically an amateur hostage negotiator. If there is one thing she's been great at my whole life, it's convincing crazy people to come down off their clock tower. She tells us to go into the bathroom and yells for my dad to wake up. My dad grabs his own rifle and starts dialing 911. At this point, my mom is calmly trying to talk this man down, asking what's going on. He starts rambling about enemies being after him. She agrees and offers to go help him look for the enemies who are after him. She's ushering him closer to the front door, and finally she asks if she can borrow the shotgun. The man pauses, thinking about it, then proceeds to hand her the shotgun. She goes outside with him and sits him down outside the door as they wait for the police. My dad has stashed the shotgun at this point, and we're watching this insanity go down. She's comforting him and making small talk when the police show up and take the man away for a mental health assessment. It turns out the guy had fired a shot into his own headboard during a flashback, and it escalated from there. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And if you would like a chance to have your story featured in an upcoming video, make sure you email it to yourmaker6260 at gmail.com. And if you would like to gain early access to all of my content, as well as some other cool perks, make sure you go check out my Patreon page. It's a cool way for you guys to help support the channel, as well as get some perks. 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 Also, I have a huge announcement, something I'm very excited to share with you guys. I am finally done with my first ever audiobook, and it is up for sale. That was the one I was working on with Eden, Dance in the Dark, by Chris Allen and Melody Ann. And the even better news is you guys can actually get it for free if you've never had Audible. You can use their trial membership and get the book for free. And if Audible isn't something you want or have the money for, you can cancel the subscription after you get the book. You know what I mean? And it's really free. So make sure you go check it out. I'm going to have a link in the description, in the comments, and I'm going to try to put an annotation on the screen. Well, a card, since I got rid of annotations. But yes, you can actually go get the book on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon. That was the other one. And if you go through Audible, like I said, they have the trial membership where you get a book for free. And you can go ahead and get it for free and cancel the membership. Hey, it's free. There's no reason for you not to go get it if you want to check it out. It is adult themed. I do want to say that. It's about three hours of content for you to enjoy. For free. If you enjoy it, make sure you leave a review. Please. I am going to go ahead and include about a five minute exclusive preview. And afterwards, go get the full version. Or else. Are you sure you want to hear my story? This is something I've held on to for a very long time. It's a memory that refuses to let go and it's been my burden to bear. I told her, shifting the slightest bit to portray discomfort. She'd never know it was an act. I could read her, but there was no way for her to read me. Today Janice was wearing a black skirt and a fitted green blouse. My eyes raked slowly over her, from the top of her shiny hair to the soles of her respectable two-inch heels, before drawing upward again resting for only a moment on the creamy softness of the bit of thigh she was revealing. Janice shifted in her seat again, and I fought back a smile. I was well aware of when a woman wanted me, even if she didn't want to feel the strong desire. There was a certain change in the air, a spark in a woman's eyes, 
a hitch in her breath, and a stirring in her body that she couldn't stop. Yes, this woman, who had to barely be out of psych school, was completely in over her head. If she had been too easy to break, I wouldn't have been interested, but I also didn't want to spend a year on the task. I didn't have to. I could have her beneath me by the end of this session if I truly wanted to. But what fun would that be? I'm here to listen and to help you, Adam. I'm not here to judge. Please, continue your story. She replied softly. I paused a moment longer as I shifted my head and looked down. I needed to play the moment just right. I needed her to feel my pain and agony. Hmm, that was enough to make me laugh. If only I were capable of real emotion. I didn't grow up in a traditional sort of way, I told her, then paused once more. The slightest bit of impatience entered her expression. I wanted to tisk at her. She'd have to learn to hide her emotions better if she wanted to stay in this job. Not that it would matter by the time I was done. I smiled again. Please go on, she said, her composure firmly back in place. I began the story. I first experienced death at the age of 12. Something inside of me forever shifted on that day. What I didn't realize then was things had already been changing. This just helped push it over the edge. How was that? She asked when I took too long to continue. I was doing what most boys did at that age, riding my bike to meet some friends so we could head over to the river. Of course I was a bit behind schedule, but at that age time didn't really mean anything. Not to mention my deadbeat mother never cared where I was or when I'd be home, so I was pretty much on my own every day. You had a harsh relationship with your mom? Oh yes, she wanted to talk about mommy issues. How typical of her. I was almost disappointed in her predictability. That's not the point of this story, I informed her, and she seemed to shrink away at my tone. Good. Things certainly changed a lot for me at the age of 6 to 12, that's for sure. There's so much to say about why they changed, but I'm not quite ready to explain what happened. Not yet, at least. I had to give her a little taste to keep her intrigued. But right now we need to get back to me cruising along the back roads without a care in the world. I was on my way to Joe's house, and I had to pass Miller's Pond to get there. That was a spot my friends and I'd go late at night to take a dip or drink a few beers we'd stolen from our parents' fridges. As I neared the pond, I noticed something in the water. Not thinking too much about it, I kept on riding. But all of a sudden, a blood-curdling scream filled my ears. I took a deep breath as if I was frightened, as if I were there in that moment. I almost wish I were. So much had changed for me on that day. I locked my brakes and skidded to a stop before dropping my bike to the ground and running to the water's edge. I stopped as I tried to figure out exactly what I was seeing. It couldn't possibly be real, right? No, there was no chance of that. A young girl no more than five or six years old was thrashing and screaming from deep in the water, obviously struggling to stay afloat. But that wasn't the most shocking thing going on. I stopped as if it was too painful for me to continue. So I hope you enjoyed that sneak peek of the audiobook Dance in the Dark. Well, it's actually a preview of the book, but I did the audiobook version. So once again, make sure you check the description or the comments or back on the screen at that one part because I can't add too many cards. Thanks, YouTube.